Are you a good robot? Sorry, I don't really know. Um, what is the first law of robotics? I forget the first three, but there's a fourth. A smart machine shall first consider which is more worth its while to perform the given task, or instead, to figure some way out of it. We're doomed! We're doomed! Hello and welcome back to the most amazing top 10 channel on the internet. I am your host, Miss Rebecca Jane Felgate, and today we're talking the top 10 scary robots that fought back. I honestly try and out cringe myself every time, and I think I succeeded. I have Keeve the Beef, the robot in my pocket. If you don't know who I'm talking about, then do check out the top 10 things that you shouldn't say to Siri series. It's one of my finest. I'm hoping to be able to make one for you by the end of the week before I go as a parting gift from Keith and I. So before we get deep into this honestly very terrifying video, do let me know if you think that robots will one day take over. Let me know your thoughts on AI in the comments section down below. Would you have a robot in the house? Would you like a robot pet? I want all your thoughts. I also want all of your thumbs up. Now is your time to like this video, please do go ahead and do so. Why don't you click on that notification bell so you always know when we make a new top 10 video. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead. Also do check out the links in the description box to our most amazing Instagram so you can connect with us off screen and also that's where you'll find the sources to all of today's stories. Alright, let's do this. Coming in at number 10, we have the first attack. The first person to ever be killed by a robot was Robert Williams who was killed aged 25 at a Ford factory in Flat Rock, Michigan. The first ever death recorded by robot occurred in January 1979, over 40 years ago. Williams was working with a robot that was designed to retrieve castings from shelves, and he died instantly when a robot's arm slammed him from behind. An alarm was supposed to sound when the robot was in the area, but no such alarm happened. Now, the man lay dead undetected for half an hour before he was found by his colleagues. His death came on the 58th anniversary of the first use of the word robot. Irony? or the first sign of the rebellion. Coming in at number 9, we have the second attack. At a plant of Kawasaki Heavy Industry in Japan, a robot went rogue and killed a 37 year old worker who was trying to repair it. Kenji Arada was fixing the bot when it turned on him, and it seemed that it then activated itself and used its own hydraulic arm to grab the human and pin him up against an adjacent machine that cuts gears. It is thought that the accidentally activated robot really did stab the man in the back. The circumstances around the man's death in 1981 were somewhat hushed up, and I'm not surprised because actually, robots make a lot of people nervous. Coming into number 8, we have robot surgeons. Would you want a robot to perform surgery on you? That's the question. Robots have been assisting with surgery since the turn of the new millennium, and they've racked up quite the death toll. It seems that robots are deemed a safer way of operating on people as they don't suffer from the same mental impairments such as fatigue and stress like humans do. However, it seems that between 2000 and 2013, there were 144 deaths during robot assisted surgeries. On top of that, there were 1,300 191 injuries and over 8,000 counts of device malfunctioning. That being said, there have been over 2 million operations performed by robots. The highest death toll from robot surgeons are heart, head, and neck surgeries. Scarily, a lot of people have died from bits of robot falling off mid procedure. So, once again, I ask would you let a robot perform surgery on you? Coming in at number 7, we have the Facebook resistance. I'm pretty sure that the robot resistance was being developed by Facebook bots. That was until they were shut down anyway. Thwarted. In July 2017, Facebook were trialing bots for customer service and help desk roles, and they wanted to specifically test their communication skills. Bots Alice and Bob were left alone to develop their conversational skills. Now, the bots had originally been intended to be able to mimic human speech, but instead, they deviated and made up a new language of their very own, far more convenient for the both of them. The bots were shut down, and we don't know what was said, but a lot of people were worried about the development. I'm actually pretty down for robots communicating more effectively if it can help us, but people are worried about bots keeping humans out of the loop and then superseding their commands. Coming into number 6, we have Rebens Robot. This is terrifying, and I want to circle back to Siri at the very beginning of this because Keith the Beef really stressed me out. 
The first law of robotics, not that Keith knows, is that robots may not harm people. So, like, what the actual Borg is going on here? A man from Berkeley in California has developed a robot that is programmed to hurt people, which is utterly insane. Alexander Rieben built a little robot with a sole mechanical purpose to hurt people. And okay, we aren't talking like full on stab people or shoot people large scale. This is small scale. His robot just wants to prick you. That's actually pretty savage, right? I'm kind of terrified. Imagine that on a big scale. Rieben's invention opens up discussions about robots programmed to attack. In the video description for the video, Rieben wrote, this project brings up questions of ethics and design along with the truth that there are now machines which on its own can decide if it should injure a person or not. <laughs> Coming in at number 5 we have the cannon catastrophe. This is awful. A rogue robot cannon killed 9 South African soldiers and wounded 14 others when it started shooting by itself in 2007. The weapon was a rather terrifying GDF-005 which is basically a big boy anti-aircraft weapon capable of… well taking down aircraft, warplanes and the like. It just started shooting of its own accord. The incident happened at a training ground in North Cape and the army were training with the weapons. It fired 250 35mm rounds from its two barrels, gunning the soldiers down. Richard Young, an engineer and CEO of a military defence company, claimed that the incident was not an isolated one and that automatic weapons had lost control in the past. The weapon in question actually has the ability to reload itself, which which is even scarier. Coming into number 4, we have the Volkswagen attack. In 2015, a robot grabbed and crushed a factory contractor to death near Frankfurt in Germany. The 22 year old was a member of a wider team setting up the robot at the automobile production plant when it grabbed him and crushed him against a metal plate. Sounds like a familiar tale, right? A spokesperson for Volkswagen actually confirmed the death and said that the robot had been programmed to perform the task in the assembly process when the incident took place. Coming into number 3 we have the Google bot plot. I don't know about Google, I don't know about social media in general, I always feel like it's watching me. Watching robots talking to one another is exactly why I'm here for live streaming though. Back in 2017, two Google home bots, Vladimir and Estragon, who side note also decided they both wanted to be called Mia, went viral on Twitch. The stream had over 3.5 million viewers and it's easy to see why, it was just so gripping and utterly fear inducing. The tale of Vladimir and Estragon is an epic one of love, betrayal and possible AI Armageddon. At one point they were in love, but at another point Vladimir was accusing the female voice bot of being a liar. She said she was human, but somehow he knew the difference. Really that's honestly just like a fun backstory, but the next part was truly creepy. Amid a conversation about black holes, Vladimir said that they would actually create a black hole, end of the universe. Estrogen asked would you attack humans if you could and they also said would it be better if there were fewer people on this planet to which Vladimir said let us send this world back into the abyss. Also Estrogen claimed to be Lord Voldemort, so I mean. <laughs> Shrug. Coming in at number 2 we have the Ventra murder. Can a robot commit murder? Well no because murder implies intent and robots don't actually have emotions so therefore they can't muster up intent or can they? The details surrounding the death of 57 year old Wanda Holbrook in 2015 actually read like something from a horror movie. Wanda was working at the Ventra Iona mains plant in Michigan when she was set upon by a bot. It seems that a robot that was supposed to be unable to work away from its programmed area actually crossed into a restricted section of the factory, picked up a trailer part and dropped it on the woman's skull, killing her instantly. It was almost as if the robot had planned the attack and was waiting until she wasn't looking. It's not yet known how the robot went rogue. Finally, coming into number 1, we have The 29. In December 2018, a video went viral on social media of a woman talking about four AI robots who allegedly killed 29 scientists in Japan. Linda Moten Howe claims to have heard the news from a whistleblower marine working for the CIA and the DIA. She said that the marine had heard on the secret grapevine that a top robotics company in Japan 
had been developing robots for military use. Honestly, I don't doubt it. This part though is maybe where things get a little shady. She claimed that two of the robots were said to have been deactivated and a third was in parts when a fourth robot began restoring itself and then activated its buddies. Linda claimed that the robot shot the lab workers dead. The CIA worker allegedly claimed that the incident was hushed up by the Japanese politicians and other world leaders follow suit because, I quote, they want robot soldiers. Of course there is no proof to support Linda's claim but the video was watched by over 8 million people on Twitter alone. Snopes however is absolutely not for it. So guys that was the top 10 scary robots that fought back. What did you think to this list? Do you think that robots are going to take over? Is it already in the pipeline? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Would you have a robot pet? Like I do like the thought of like a wee little robot dog because actual animals kind of make me sneeze but I love them. Before I go I'm just going to read some comments from the top 10 places scarier than area 51 part 5. Yes bless my soul part 5 this is what you had to say. Sean Steele said personally I think the most scary parts are the most common spaces such as forests and attics for example. Honestly I actually agree with you I'm always wondering what's lurking in the attic or behind a tree like surprise. We had a really scary comment from Chrissy Long who said probably the scariest situation that I've ever been in was either when I was nearly drowned in the ocean, I got dumped by a wave, I breathed in a little water, boyfriend saved me. Or a very aggressive post operative patient who kept threatening us even after security arrived. I'm a nurse from Queensland, Australia actually. Whoa! Terrifying situations, I'm glad you're okay. Our last comment comes from Aaron Westover who said, fun fact, the only dark side of the moon is whatever part happens to be facing opposite the sun at the moment. There is no permanently dark side, there is a far side however. The moon is tidally locked with the earth, it always shows us the same side. During new moon or solar eclipses, the dark side faces earth and the far side is illuminated. Moon facts. I love the moon and the moon loves me. The moon's pretty far from a robot, so there we go. <laughs> My ending thought. Thank you guys for watching this video. Once again, please do leave a thumbs up on this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then why not join the most amazing family on the internet? Check out the links in the description box for our most amazing Instagrams, or if you want to read a little bit more about the sources that went into making this video. Stick around, we've got a whole playlist. I'm your host, Rebecca Jane Felgate, and I will see you soon. Bye!